Yes. We begin with breaking news here at 5 o'clock. A police pursuit is underway in Sherman Oaks. And as you can see, the suspect is weaving through traffic on a motorcycle. Let's go up to Stu Mundell in Sky 2. You can tell us about how this thing started well, and what's going on. Well, the traffic is uh, making it difficult. Oh, sorry about that. The traffic is making it difficult for the officers to keep up with this guy. And it also, as you said, being a motorcycle, also making it difficult. Now, LAPD started this pursuit. That was Topanga Division. Started this pursuit about oh, about 20 minutes ago in the, in, in the Topanga Canyon area on Victory. Originally wanted just for reckless driving. Now, officers from LAPD quickly got ahead, got their airship overhead. And because it be, of it being a motorcycle, they've been in a trap mode and then they went back to a pursuit mode but they ba basically have been keeping an eye on this guy they do want to stop him and they want to talk to him him being on a motorcycle making it very very difficult for LAPD to find any kind of way to bring this to a forceful end, like as in a pit maneuver or spike strips or anything like that basically the only weapon they have right now is that airship and they're using that in, in the fullest here keeping an eye on this guy calling out locations now since he's been on the 101 freeway pretty much since the Calabasas Bass's area. Now we are over in the uh, studio, just entering the Studio City area right now. Uh, e basically, they've been uh, calling it out, but they've basically asked the CHP to take over this pursuit. Uh, we have saw a couple of CHP units on the freeway, but again, in this heavy traffic, the only other officers that could possibly really keep up with them would be other motorcycle officers, and we have yet to see those in this pursuit. Again, though, right now, I can tell you that we're approaching Woodman, and we're on the 101. Again, the original want for this guy, just reckless driving, and it, now it's going to be felony evading as well. The airship doing most of the work right now, calling out the locations and letting the officers on the ground know, even if the CHP does become the primary, they're going to start using the LAPD airship to keep eyes on this, uh, on this individual to make sure that they know exactly where he is and where he gets off. Of course, the, uh, of course if he does get off the freeway, LAPD will be notified immediately, and again, they, the unclear if they will use the pursuit tactics that we are more commonly see where they're right behind him making that presence known or they're just going to watch him but right now still eluding officers and uh, the original want was just for reckless driving i don't know if you can comment on this but uh it, it we have to make mention of it i mean it looks like he's wearing a cape or an overcoat of some kind not that that has any kind of significance but it is kind of uh different on a motorcycle <laughs> Well, you know, the, we saw that uh, it looks like a like a leather trench coat, uh, and and he was digging in the in the pockets earlier on. Uh, it was unclear what he was looking for. I thought maybe he was looking for a cell phone or something along those lines. And again, these are the things that officers are watching from the helicopter as well, and also commenting on. We don't know why he's being so elusive, why he doesn't want to talk to officers, and that always puts LAPD or any uh, any police agency in an odd spot when they're in a pursuit. They don't know what this guy really has in mind you know he might be armed he might not be armed he might have some maybe he's under drugs there we go there's the chp and there you can see as soon as this guy sees those officers he's really starting to open up that speed weaving in and out of traffic again that was the chp officer and they are working in unison right now chp in the lead uh, agency they basically handed it over you can see we're approaching the uh, uh the 134 and, and it looks like if he stays on this side of the freeway he's going to be taking the 134 uh again though laurel can is going to be the next major that he's crossing and traffic is pretty i would call it more than medium it's kind of packed down there the bike obviously having an easier time getting through this but again a lot of traffic somebody could make one of these turns very quickly change lanes and this could come to an abrupt end injuring that uh, suspect boy there's no doubt about that this again taking place on the 101 in studio city Stu, let me ask you this question it's clearly advantage motorcycle in this kind of traffic the airship obviously neutralizes that slightly but what would be the strategy well, hope, well oh, look at that whoa. i don't know about advantage yeah. <laughs> oh Man. my goodness you know, it, this is and, so and that's the thing right you know you, we watch these things and it is it is very dangerous and and mm -hmm. you know we we do we kind of try to uh, to put it into those kind of ideas or that perspective of you know advantage disadvantage good guy bad guy type of scenarios and you know it is it's very very dangerous it's actually dangerous for the uh, for the civilians on the road as well you saw that weaving it right between those cars right there threading the needle and again you know uh, people trying to get out of the way it's packed you're driving on the freeway you're kind of grumpy about the you know your day 
away, now traffic, and then all of a sudden you've got blinking lights, you swerve, who knows what's going to happen. It looks like we're staying on the 101 as we're starting to work our way uh, out of the Studio City area into the Universal Studios area. Again, yet officer in that SUV really kind of making his presence known now that the traffic has lightened up a little bit. That might be one of those newer uh, uh, Ford Explorer uh, specially equipped vehicles that the CHP just purchased. Again, though, you can see him basically tracking, keeping right up with this guy. Uh, and again, really kind of makes you wonder that officer limited what he can do when he gets up next to him, but definitely making his presence known. And hopefully that command presence will r register with this guy and he'll basically just say, all right, I'm just going to pull over. Well, you know, he really has command of the motorcycle. I think we can certainly say that, that he uh, apparently has driven one before. I asked the question again about the overcoat because you wonder if this was his bike or if this was possibly a stolen bike. Well, again, you know, those are the questions that, we, you know, that officers are, are pondering as well. You know, they can run the plate. They can get an idea who that person is. But obviously, you're not going to be able to make an identifying match of that person with the helmet and, as you say, that overcoat and et cetera. It almost does look like some sort of a superhero there with that uh, leather coat flapping in the wind. But again, uh, if this is a superhero, he's going to be a super villain because these officers definitely want this guy to stop. He's been uh, disobeying the all the... Uh, traffic laws pretty much for most of the afternoon here and again really starting to speed up we're doing a lot of swerving around out here and you know again the the faster this happens the higher the odds that this is going to end poorly and Stu, i'm sitting here saying to myself why isn't traffic like this when i'm on the road uh, it, it doesn't it, it appears <laughs> to be light to moderate what what do you see up ahead uh, actually, I'm just uh, glancing up ahead as we're working our way through the uh, pass out here, and it is. It is just as you said. It's like pursuit traffic. It is It is moderate at best. If this was the afternoon that we were driving home, it, we'd be stopped uh, bumper to bumper. This guy basically just working his way through this traffic. It is very, very light as we're working our way southbound on the 101 now, uh, approaching probably uh, the Highland Boulevard. Again, this guy really just booking along here, and officers from the CA HP now uh, falling back just a little bit, but uh, you can see that one guy uh, with that newer Explorer really kind of closing that gap and making his presence known to this guy. And you know what? Um, pretty soon he's going to have a number of opportunities in terms of freeways. Uh, uh, Stu, he's going to be approaching, uh, well, the 110 freeway for sure. Five, he could be headed toward uh, Pasadena if that's the case. So I'm sure they've, they're pretty concerned about that, but I'm, I'm sure contemplating at the same time. Uh the different moves that he can make. Well, you know, definitely. And, and, you know, and when traffic starts getting really, really thick out there, you know, a motorcycle always has a little bit of an advantage. But, you know, we've seen it where it is so bumper to bumper that even bikes get stalled out. Again, you kind of wonder if he's just going to stay here on the freeway. It almost seems like he's uh, playing around with these guys. You know, he knows that they can't pit him. He knows that they can't bump him. So he's just going to just keep driving, staying just that one step ahead of him. Uh, again, using just the freeway. Uh, he has not gotten off on the, on the roads. It started on roads. Uh, and then it also kind of makes me think maybe he's got a destination. Uh, maybe this is, uh, you know, he is going someplace other than just eluding officers. Uh, we're staying here on the 101. He is kind of close to those lanes where you, you could jump off at any moment, and that really would be a disadvantage for that uh, cruiser right there. But that cruiser basically just keeping pace with him, uh, you've got to wonder, maybe he's using the uh, loudspeaker down there and saying, hey, buddy, just pull over. Just give this up. You know, stop now. Uh, or uh, if he, they're just sitting there with their sirens going and uh, looking ahead, I am, I'm almost shocked to say that it, it looks like the 101 wide open. I'm wondering if possibly they did some kind of break because it is wide open down there. There are no other cars on the freeway. And Stu, they'll uh, oh, well, thought maybe he was moving over to the right lane. They will be at a real disadvantage if he jumps off that freeway. And then, of course, it depends on how quickly they can get uh, units into that area if he does take an exit. Well, that's, that's for sure, and that's what the LAPD was dealing with when the originally this started. You know, that first unit got up behind him pretty quickly, and as soon as those lights and sirens came on, this guy got on opposite, opposite traffic and took off. So he definitely wanted to leave. He had no intention of stopping from the get-go, and the original want was just reckless driving. So, again, it makes you kind of wonder, if it was just reckless driving, this guy would have turned on his lights. He probably would have got a ticket. Makes you wonder why he just doesn't stop and again maybe this person is a wanted felon maybe he has some uh, some 
something that he shouldn't have on his person. Uh, so there's, these are all the questions that officers have to deal with as well. Even if he does stop, I can assure you they will not just run up to him and take him into custody. They're going to make sure that he complies 100%. You know, it makes me think about uh, being on a freeway, and I, as we've been saying, this is unbelievable that the 101 is this open at this time of day, that's for sure. But again, it's, it's very disconcerting to motorists who are in uh, vehicles and they have someone on a motorcycle that's going so fast and so quickly that just comes up upon them that they can't uh, necessarily react. And sometimes when they do, it could also be a danger for the person on the motorcycle. So this is... Um, this, this is something I'm just thinking about watching this right now because I've been in that situation where it's a little frightening. <laughs> oh, you know, definitely. And then that's the thing, too, is, you know, a lot of people, they get paranoid when a motorcycle gets near their vehicle, just like a big rig. Mm. It's almost the same thing, except, you know, with a motorcycle, you might be a little bit more concerned about the rider than you are with you. But yes, you're right. A lot of people, I hear that quite commonly. You're driving on the freeway, you got a bike right behind you, and then you don't know what you got, what you can do. I mean, if you pull over, he might could be contemplating going the other direction. It, it, it is very scary. And then this guy, you got to add in, he's got lights and sirens. And again, I have to let you know right now as we're approaching Vermont, the freeway is basically getting stopped. It, now we're really starting to see that traffic that we are so uh, common to seeing out here in the Los Angeles area. And now it is really starting to back up out here. And uh, the officers had that little bit of advantage there. They're going to lose that now as uh, we're starting to get into some heavy traffic. Well, as, uh, you know, as Pat pointed out, uh, when they're lane splitting and firing along like that, it's, I don't care how many times it happens to you, it's always startling as a driver of a vehicle, yes. of a car. It's really uh, 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 very startling. And this guy, got, he's got no qualms about shooting between these vehicles. You know, we just, no, that, we were that's reporting. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking no, about no, go ahead, yesterday no. how we were reporting on uh, that incident that actually happened in New York and mm -hmm. involved a club, but there was just one person on a motorcycle who stopped and an SUV bumped that motorcyclist. Um, and, you know, we know what happens, happened after that. They chased the, uh, the guy that was driving the SUV and pulled him out of the vehicle. But just how quickly something like this can happen from an abrupt stop by a vehicle trying to avoid hitting the person on the bicycle. It can cause so many different problems or scenarios. Most definitely, and you know, and, and that's the thing too, that you know, being a motorcycle, uh, this motorcycle rider obviously knows these things, has these in his mind, and you know, again, seems to be pretty well versed on riding. Uh, he's basically just weaving in and out here. He has pulled some uh, pretty close calls. And there's another one that, that might look a little closer than it really was, but again, he is just cutting in between these cars like there's nothing to it, just keeping up this basically 80 mile an hour speed 50 60 and even you know 20 miles an hour faster than whatever the traffic is going is basically what we're seeing out here and uh, officers from the CHP you know they got their lights and sirens they were uh, falling behind there for a little bit they got caught up in traffic and now basically back into some sort of tracking mode and uh, again you know they're calling it out I hear them uh, on another radio and uh, officers from LAPD not involved in the pursuit, but definitely know that this is going on. So if this guy gets off the freeway, the LAPD will definitely be engaging it very, very quickly. I can tell you right now, we're basically coming up on uh, Glendale. Uh, and there's Union Avenue, there's a sign, but Glendale is coming up, uh, the two freeway. But uh, it really seems to me that he's he's been staying on these majors and basically just following And I'm kind of curious to see 110, 101, what his choice is going to be. 101 looks a little bit more packed. But, uh, but not much better than the 101. Boy, every time he gets into traffic like this, those two, his pattern has been to uh, tone it down a bit without seeing the black and white behind him. Well, you know, that's right. And as this is part of the uh, process that LAPD has been trained to do and other agencies, they, they basically, that's what the way they say we should go into tracking mode. They feel that the presence of the black and white off and the slights and sirens excites the suspect and makes, you know, he starts acting crazier. And they basically, they do this, they fall back and they just watch. But with this guy, <coughs> even if they're just watching, you know, we don't know where he's going to go. Uh, he, and, and just allowing him to run freely like this, that might not be the best best deal either. So they are. They're kind of playing that middle card, uh, just kind of keeping an eye on him. They have officers nearby. He hasn't really done anything so crazy where they're going to say, you know, the public is really, is you know, there's a public safety issue. Uh, I can tell you right now, 
definitely established on the 101. We're going to be working our way through the north side of downtown Los Angeles. And uh, looking ahead, it's pretty much more of the same. Uh, just a little bit of traffic out there. But this guy just basically uh, on, a, on a little ride out here as uh, LAPD and uh, anybody watching the news is... Uh, joining him this afternoon. You know, Stu, we joined you at uh, Woodland Hills, and can you tell us again uh, where this originated, where they started uh, following this motorcycle? We, we originally heard this uh, in, in the Topanga Canyon area on uh, Victory Boulevard. Uh, again, reckless driving was the original one on it. Uh, the officers doing what they're trained to do uh, got behind him. Uh, they, they asked for what they call a backup uh, and an air unit. That was the helicopter. Pretty much as soon as that helicopter got there and uh, that first unit turned on his lights and sirens, this guy just took off. And the first thing apparently he did or that we heard that he did was got go into opposing lanes of traffic to get away from that officer. So that was a, an, an extreme move for basically just, a, hey, we just want to pull you over. And again, this is why LAPD and other agencies are so interested in stopping this guy and talking to him. Uh, those kind of reactions, you know, why didn't he just pull over? That's basically the big question. Uh, it really seems like we're just staying on the 101 freeway up. Now, as I said it, he's really starting to cut around because he does have a choice over here of the 10 freeway, uh, but he's just weaving in and out of traffic. Again, I don't think there are many, if any, uh, units, black and white units behind him anymore as he's working his way. I just want to make sure we don't lose him here. And, and as we're starting to work, it looks like we're going to be going south here. So that's going to be five freeway that gives him the uh, the 60 and also, uh, uh, yeah, the 60 freeway if we keep in this direction. He's starting to pick it up right now. He's got to know, though, uh, the, the, I mean, a pursuit in Los Angeles, he's got to know that helicopter's overhead keeping an eye on him, even though he doesn't see any black and whites do. Well, that's right. And, you know, and that's the thing. You, you'd think that with that knowledge, you'd just say, hey, you know what, I better just, you know, pull over. Or, or you know what, I, maybe he's doing, I just want to enjoy my last couple of minutes. But this doesn't look very <laughs> enjoyable. This looks like he's really trying to get away. And, th again, it, you never away. He is speeding up now uh, quite a bit, like you said, uh, really starting to move out. And, again, we're coming up on the East L.A. interchange. So he's going to have several choices of where he can go as we work our way down here. Uh, again, though, Looking ahead, it's it, it is it is just uh, well the 60 really looks like it's backed up pretty bad. But uh, again, uh, you know he's just going to weave his way in and out here and uh, just keep everybody at bay. Well, you know we have uh, legal analyst Steve Meister on the set with us. We were going prepared to talk about the Jackson verdict, which we will uh, certainly in in due time. But he was saying he probably felt that he could get away at first, and now he's just so too deep in, so he's just uh, going to continue. He really has no other choice but to just keep riding. You know, as Steve, as he, he's mic'd up, as a criminal defense lawyer, have you ever defended somebody in one of these? Yeah, I have. And oh, I hold on one second. We, we got to we'll hook your mic up here. I think that's sure. where he was saying he got, he yeah. knows what's going on yeah. because he's had clients that have done the exact same thing. We're going to try to get your mic. It is one of those deals. Steve had written us a note saying uh, he took right. off because he thought he could get away with it, basically. I, sp I suppose they all think that at some point, however. Well, it, it, again, yeah. we, you know, maybe he's just going until he decides to stop, as happens in uh, so many different cases uh, where he'll just decide to like give up because he can't. Here. All right, and maybe he's going to familiar territory. Yeah, you know, and, or maybe he's just using one of those... Uh, in and off the freeway type of deals. No, it does look like uh, we are going to be getting off the freeway here. I, I'd like to get a, a street name if I could, but again, uh, CHP and LAPD have been working on this and uh, basically uh, changing or changing their guards was just going on when he made this move. We're definitely on uh, streets out here, East East LA area. And and uh, this, I'm sorry, this is going to be, we're in the Hollenbeck. Look at this. Look, look at these look pedestrians. At just. <laughs> Just yet, just make, I mean, changing his mind. I don't know what what the deal was there. Uh, just basically made a U-turn right there. Maybe th he really thinks that he can uh, elude them. Looks like he's going what? into a walkway. And is he going to try uh, a foot bail? Yeah, yeah. And you know, th this kind of gives you an idea that this guy really knows the neighborhood. That was a little walkway mm -hmm. that took you onto a, a side street out here. 
Uh, again, this kind of uh, movement lets you know that uh, this guy probably knows the area or got very lucky right there. Uh, again, we're in the Hollenbeck area, so we're still, we're probably Boyle Heights is going to be the, the area. He got off the 60 freeway and basically drove, started on some side streets and then just said, you know what, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to make this U-turn and work our way over here. Uh, again, though, uh, I'll get you a street here in just a second, but no officers behind him right now at all as we're approaching a major out here. And again, uh, you know, he might be thinking right now he's got it, he got it made, running a red light, not very wise. I can tell you just because I read the street sign, that was Indiana that we just crossed. But again, in a residential area out here and still eluding LAPD and other officers. He's got it, yeah. And there it he goes. There he goes, right here. <laughs> yep, yep. Looks like he's uh, basically running into his house. Uh, you can see somebody else over there uh, making, the, uh, basically grabbing the bike for the guy. Basically, just went into the uh, into the home. Uh, I want to keep an eye on this uh, this guy with the motorcycle as he kind of puts it away. Uh, you know, again though, dro dropped the bike, ran into the ran underneath these trees into that home. Again, officers from LAPD, CHP, not quite here yet. Well, you know what's what's interesting is apparently not because most of the people, if you noticed how slowly they were walking, those pedestrians trying to walk across the street. I mean, they couldn't see. Now, what is this about? Yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea if these are uh, if these people know this guy or are related to him. Yeah, basically, he's just this guy just came and grabbed the helmet and is walking off. And, but you uh, know what, you know, uh, Stu? Basically doing don't don't yeah. want to interrupt you, but 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 Steve, that might be him. He didn't he have on a black and white checkered shirt and yeah. some white gym white shoes? shoes? He looks like he took off the coat, Stu. Uh, you know, I think this is the other guy. I think this is the guy that uh, that basically put the motorcycle away after he dropped it. Now there was a uh, gentleman know, I, walking I out with a, a young person. The person, the young person, was holding something to his face, and this guy had a black and white checked shirt on and some white gym shoes, and it looked like it could have been the guy on the bike. But he just took off the overcoat. All right. Uh, you know, yeah, it could be. It could definitely be. <laughs> I, you know, that's, that's your reward, Stu, for helping move the motorcycle yeah, in the garage. That's the helper. Yeah. Yeah, that's the helper right there. That other guy basically just walked off. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting some direction. Uh, I'm Go ahead, yeah, and look around for him. But that, that may have been the guy. With the young person. Exactly, who did have something up to their face. Yes. Him. That's him, isn't it? Looks like it. Black and white shirt, white shoes. Yeah. Dark pants. Hang on just one second here. I'm having a little difficulty holding this shot because uh, we were we were set up for the other thing, but uh, we'll definitely try to keep an eye on this guy right here. Uh, again, I'll hang on just one second. All right. Yeah, that's no problem. We can still see him. You're keeping him in. You're doing a good job. Yeah. It looks like uh, it looks like he's going to be going behind a building here. It looks like we're working our way out towards a mall. Uh, going to keep an eye on him, like you said. He's and this could very purpose. well be him. Just uh, walking along here. Nothing to see here. I had nothing to do with that is probably what he's saying to himself, but uh, we might know different out here. I, I'm wondering if somebody is going to be able to notify the, uh, the LAPD CHP about this as we're working our way. I don't want to lose him behind this tree. I'm working with my pilot. Uh, I, again, there he is. That's him, right? Yep, yeah, yep. that's him. And, and it, it is. It is, it, you know. Uh, you, you know, maybe he's just out for his afternoon walk, but very unusual behavior as this thing came to an end and he just kind of just happened to be walking away. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on this guy out here. And as soon as we are able to give you a cross street, which we might be able to do here very shortly, we will. But definitely, you kind of have to wonder that younger woman just kind of disappeared. This guy is here all by himself just walking along now. Well, even if we, um, as, as we will sh shortly, uh, play back the video of him Walking back out of that that home or wherever he was, there was this person here with a young Whittier person and Delamo. with something up to their Lama, face. Lama and Whittier. And he, it certainly I, I'm, I'm just, uh, looks I'm like. I'm just working with my, with my pilot who's actually talking With the shirt to the, uh, on, uh, if anybody else, if they there. can hear us, uh, Paul and Steve, with the black and white gingham shirt, the white gym shoes. It's interesting that that person emerged from that home Right, with this and now check on shirt on phone. and these white shoes. I thought he was going to surrender. Yep. Yep. And I uh, thought he's, he just, he's, he's walking on Whittier. 
walking on Whittier, and he passed uh, a, a llama yes, right Stuart. there. And uh, looks like he looks like he's going to start walking down, a, kind of staying off the major now. So. And Stu, what were you saying about working with the pilot to? Whittier. Yeah, I, I actually was working with Dan, my pilot, this afternoon, and he's passing along this information to other uh, other uh, helicopters, yeah. officers out here to give them the uh, location. Looks like he's one of, you know, he's not walking into the auto zone, but he's on Whittier. Definitely walked into the auto zone on Whittier. That's uh, basically where he went to. Uh, just walked into there. I'll get you that cross street right here in a second, but definitely we're at the corner of Whittier and Indiana. There's a uh, officer right there. Whittier and Indiana walked into the... Uh, there we go. They're uh, they're Did they're right. they're working their there way over go. there right now. So, well, Pat and Paul, we're going to find out very shortly if this uh, guy was involved in this pursuit. Yeah. If this was, it was a very clever uh, play and a, an excellent try. I got to give you that. This probably is one of the the, the one of the uh, endings that has given me <laughs> more thought, you know, than just. Uh, Dump, dumping and running. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the back of the the, the store as well. Uh, maybe do an orbit here uh, to keep an eye on the front and the rear. But you can see officers swarming this auto zone right now oh, as uh, they're looking for that suspect. He, well. he must watch a lot of crime procedurals. Maybe he figured that one out because that was a, a what do you call that, Steve? Is that a bait and switch? That I don't know, but he he apparently took off that overcoat very quickly and walked out with with someone else. It almost to me looked like, like he was trying to appear that he was giving aid to that young person, but uh, was able to walk away. But now he's surrounded. They seem to be yeah, leave it have to him a, in custody. Yeah. Leave it to CBS2, leave it to Steve Meister, to a uh, astute person and a critical observer of people to figure out that was him walking away, Steve. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, don't tell him my name. <laughs> well, he might ask you to he represent might, yeah, him anyway. <laughs> that, that you can know my name for. <laughs> Well, right. Hollenbeck, Hollenbeck uh, LAPD definitely uh, talking to this gentleman right now. They're they're going to take him into custody and uh, definitely have some questions for him, that's for sure. But it most bizarre ending to a pursuit that I've seen in a long time, that's for sure. Well, there's no doubt All about right. that, Stu. We want to thank you very much, and we'll get an update from you a little bit later on in the newscast as we move on here to other big news.